Hey, hello and welcome to the Garden of the Black Roses. Um, this is the next chapter for my original piece, The Iron The Adventures of the Iron Wolves, Book Two, Beta. Um this chapter I may have to skip a bit. I think there's Yeah, there is a bit that I may have to skip only because it's a pet naughty but I am leaving the link to this story on Inkit in the comments below so you'll be able to read that section right. so let's get into it chapter 2 shared memories Stikes fell to his knees his hands planted firmly over his ears Memories he had never seen before flowed through him like a torrent. He screamed. Those memories burned like fire through his head. They erased the false memories he had received from Anima so long ago. Rue and Hawkeye stood on either side of Stikes, their hands on his shoulders, steadying him. Through the pain, Stikes could hear the worried voices of his friends with him, lancing through his ears to soothe the burning sensation. I'm all right, gasped. Stikes gasped, leaning back against their hands. I just received fresh memories for Anima. I wasn't prepared to receive them. One memory stayed prominent in her mind. It seems she's met her brother. A younger version of Anima stood in what looked like a fiery cavern for two large thrones. Two pairs of torn black wing feathered wings hung limp from her back, her tears falling onto the still form of a man with short navy hair, covered in blood. A woman, not much older than Anima was now, scooped her up and ran from the room. A fallen angel. Stikes found himself glancing at Rue and wondered at Rue, wondering if he knew Anima was his blood enemy. We aren't so different after all. He sifted through the memories he received. One memory was fuzzed, almost pitch black. Mama? Anima called in the darkness. Mama? The sound of two horses approached her. Are you lost, little princess? Anima looked up to the man. His jet black hair blended into the night. We'll take good care of you and your mother. His bright red eyes flashed menacingly as he and he grabbed her wrist. Fire blasts erupted in the darkness. Anima screamed. Pain and fear flowed through her body as she struggled against the strong arms holding her. The memory faded as if she had lost consciousness towards the end of it. Stark froze on the spot. How many sad memories did she remember just now? He shook his head and smiled, feeling Chie sit down next to him to check his vitals. Anima might not be herself for a while, he murmured to them quietly. She learnt about her true past. It's very painful to know. A new Mary memory bloomed in his mind. A somewhat happier memory. Mama? Anima shook a woman lying on the dirt. In the dirt. Her clothes were torn and... Blood covered her body. Mama, answer me. A gentle hand touched her shoulder. Anima flinched, raising her arm in defense. No more, no more, don't hurt me. I'm not here to hurt you, sweet pea. A soft voice replied. Anima looked up to a middle-aged man with shoulder-length, sun-streaked locks and the deepest blue eyes. 
I wouldn't hurt someone as sweet as you. A boy around ten years old crouched and pressed two fingers to the woman's neck. She hasn't much longer to live, father. The woman opened her eyes to meet the deep blue ones of the middle-aged man. My daughter? She's here. Anima sat crying beside her. The woman touched her knee gently. We'll take care of her for you. The woman nodded her head. My time draws short. Draws short. She sat up and drew a dagger with a strange crest of a pair of black crossed feathers from her belt. Anima? She raised the dagger. Anima looked up and extended her hand. <coughs> Anima looked up and extended her hand. Mama will be all right. The woman nodded and cut deeply across Anima's palm. She took the boy's arm roughly and did the same. The boy yelped in pain. She pressed their hands together, curling their fingers until they were interlocked. Blood of elves, humans and fallen angels, she said quietly in a prayer-like voice. Intermingle, interlace, intertwine. Those who weren't blood-related be so now. She drew a crescent moon on Anima's forehead in her blood. Forget me. Forget and live happily. Mama? Anima fell backwards. The memory faded again in time for her to hear Chie arcs. In time... Faded again in time for him to hear Chie arcs. Are you alright? Her concerned eyes remained... Reminded him of Mario's just before he rescued her from the cells in the ruins headquarters. If Anima is with Sarian, then she should be safe until we get there. But you... Her fingers were pressed hard against his wrist. Your pulse is racing like as if you have run a hundred miles. I'll be fine, he replied softly. A small tear fell from his eye unknowingly. Just... He looked at Chie, Miyako, and Ru in turn before speaking. Did you know? And he was passed, I mean. He looked at Ru a bit longer than the others. You especially. You didn't sense what she was? Ru smiled gently. Anima is Anima, after all. What race she is actually doesn't matter to me. I was charged to look after the Lunarian royal family. And that is what I will do. Until there is no breath left in my body. He sat down next to Stikes with a sigh and added, I knew I still f I knew, and I still fell in love with her. I wasn't going to make her my enemy just because of her race. Stikes looked at Miyako and Chie, who shrugged, not understanding what he was talking about. Stikes sighed and motioned everyone to sit. What I tell you is currently unknown to both the Iron Wolves and Lunarius, aside from myself, Sarian, and Ru, are the only ones who know. Anima awoke to an empty cell. Sarian? She sit up. She's sitting up. She looked around the room. Sarian? Where is he? With a sigh, she curled back up into a ball. Stikes. Closing her eyes, she threw her spirit forward. Rebounding against the wall, she snapped her eyes open in shock. I'm trapped? Closing her eyes, she tried once more to throw her spirit out to find Stikes. Enjoying my box? A voice from the door asked. 
I learned about the twin fate rings from Sarian. I must say, you and Stikes are more troublesome than you appear to be. Oslo stepped into the room. His shirt hung loose and undone. Crouching down, he ran a finger over her cheek and down to her breast. What Stikes knows but can't stop will hurt him more. Leaning forwards, he brushed his lips gently over her chest and up her neck to her cheek. Anima pushed her hands outwards, forcing him away from her. Oslo smiled and shook his head. Now that won't do, my sweet. Let's recreate those memories from so long ago, shall we? Reaching into his pocket, he pulled a red vial and held it in front of her. Know what this is? Anima froze. Her eyes widened at the sight of the tiny bottle. Compulsion potion. Shaking, she looked up at Oslo. You're not going to make me drink that, are you? Oslo moved quickly, pinning both her wrists under his right hand. His body held her flat. His body held her flat underneath him. Anima felt a twinge in her heart. She knew what she saw was being relayed to Stikes. Oslo brought the vial close to her lips, brushing them with the edge of the cork. Want to know what I've done with Sarian? Oslo asked softly. He liked this game, and hoped more would be happening in the future. He's currently enjoying the delights of the rack at the moment, but don't worry. The torture will end as soon as you drink this potion. Anima's eyes watered. Styx is going to murder me. Closing her eyes, she relaxed and murmured, You need to show me my brother first. Oslo smiled and led her up. Very well, my princess. Bowing to her, he extended his hand towards the door. Shall we? Anima glanced at him sidelong before walking ahead of him. She could sense Stikes' presence in her mind. Her thoughts just, his thoughts just out of reach to touch and talk to directly. The rings forbade that sort of connection, but, as always, a part of her wondered if it... Was it really forbidden? Or just difficult to attain? She followed the hall along, turning at crossroads as Oslo directed, until they came to a long, winding stairway, leading down into the darkness. Down there. Oslo directed when Anima faltered in her step. My beautiful torture chamber is down there. Faint screams floated up to them. It seems they are tightening it again. I did say tighten at two notches every hour. I wonder if Sarian is at his limit. Anima flew down the stairs following the screams. Sarian! The screams paused briefly, then replaced by whimpering. Anima jumped over the last few steps and ran up to where Sarian was stretched out tightly over a deceptively soft mattress. Sarian! She ran a hand over his strained arms and legs before attempting to undo the ropes. You can't undo them, Oslo mused from the doorway at the foot of the stairs. I'm using one of the demon's greatest treasures. He took great pleasure when Anima looked at him defeated. I'm sure you've heard of Glipnir. Anima's eyes widened. A treasure from the old world has resurfaced? How many more are out there that will crop up and be used for evil? Release him! Anima demanded angrily. Release him right now! You do something for me, and I'll do something for you, Oslo replied, waving the bottle at her. Anima took the bottle and uncorked it, and looked up at him uncertainly. I will release him. 
I swear upon the onyx. Anima's uncertainty didn't disappear. Oslo motioned to the guardsman to release Sarian and take him up the stairs. I've kept my end. Anima watched Sarian be dragged away up the stairs before turning her attentions back to the vial and gave it a little swirl. What happens if I don't drink it? Sarian's sword, uh, Oslo's sword was out and the point just touching her neck enough to feel sharp, but not cut. I see. Anima, don't. Stike sat with his forehead resting on his knees, his fingers pressed hard against his chest. Don't. If you drink that, you won't know what will happen to you. Lifting his head so slightly, he looked around at everyone. Miyako and Chie were on guard duty. Hawkeye and Rue slept soundly at either side of him. Resting his head back down, he closed his eyes. If she can't come to me, I'll go to her. Stikes floated in spirit to the royal palace in Kulatish. Standing on the drawbridge to the entrance, he looked up at the high grey walls. He could see it. The shimmer that kept Anima in was also attempting to keep him out. Maybe there's a weakness somewhere. Floating along the wall, he noticed a place where the wall had fallen away. Placing a hand on it, a voice lanced through his head. I knew you would be coming soon. You're a tiny elf. Your tiny elf magic is no match for the might of demonic magic. Oslo. Stark growled angrily, pulling back from the wall. Don't you dare lay a finger on Anima, or I swear to you there won't be enough demons in hell to protect you. We'll see, young elf prince. Oslo's voice faded away, laughing. We'll see. Stikes drifted back across the land to his body and opened his eyes with a sigh. Rue looked back at him in concern. Saw Anima? He asked quietly, so he wouldn't wake the others. He had switched with Miyako and Chie on guard duty. Stikes shook his head and rested his head on his folded arms. What happened? The walls surrounding Kulatish Palace are imbued with demonic magic. I can't pass through them to get in. Stike stared off into the distance. Anima can't project herself out either, so all I have is her memories on what is happening within the walls. He paused, waiting for Rue to say something. As the silence stretched, Stikes decided to continue on. Oslo has Sarian as a prisoner and is using him as leverage to get Anima to do what he wants. Anima would do anything to protect her brother, Rue confirmed softly. Even anger you if she had to. Sarian was the first to welcome her to Lenarius and always intervened when she got into trouble. Rue's voice suddenly became flustered. That was before she met you and joined the Iron Wolves. I know, Rue. Stike sounded upset and very tired. I don't know what to do. She won't listen to me. I can't get near her to talk to her either. It's painful. Rue nodded. It's the same feeling I had when she was attacked by Roma. I was so close, yet I couldn't do anything. Sykes looked up at him, annoyed. Rue's eyes showed only sincerity and understanding. Even if Anima upsets you with her decisions, even if Oslo does the worst things imaginable to her, you need to be the one who is stronger to tell her that you love her regardless. I know. Stikes replied. Uh, Stikes rested his head back down onto his arms. Thank you, 
Ru. What do you see? Ru asked softly. If you don't mind me asking. He watched Dykes close his eyes again. Something I wish I wasn't at. Something I wish wasn't happening. Stikes murmured more to himself than to Rue. Oslo has learnt her weakness and is now extracting some of her blood to create a modified compulsion potion. He aims to bend her to his will. Anima sat stroking Sarian's auburn hair absently, her eyes now vacant and cold, merely recording and sending what she saw to Stikes. Oslo smiled at this progress. The fallen princess is under my control. I can rule hell as I please without resistance now. Crouching down, he whispered to her quietly. When he wakes up, I want you to come to my chambers. As you wish, Master Oslo, Anima replied in a mon monotone voice. I am yours to command. She gently continued to stroke Sarian's hair. Oslo smiled and left the cell. It wasn't long until Sarian woke up. Anima? He looked up towards the vacant eyes of his sister. Compulsion. Sarian sat up and moved quickly to shake her. Anima, snap out of it. Anima pushed him back and went to the door. With her back to him, she spoke. Master Oslo told me to tell you these words. Sarian sat up and struggled to reach out to her. You know that the blood red compulsion potion is absolute obedience for the length of time the potion is active. You know I drank it to save you from torture. She turned to face him, her voice rising to harsh tones. This is your true punishment for trying to kill me in revenge for her, Prince of Lenarius. Uh, Sarian lowered his head, his body shaking violently. So he's punished you for my mistake. Looking up, he stared into Anima's eyes, his words now directed elsewhere. Please save her. Come soon and save her. Stikes! Tears fell onto the straw-covered floor. Please. I have no power to help her. Looking up at Anima once more, he hoped for some recognition. Anima stared at him with her vacant eyes before turning to leave, locking the cell door behind her. A wail of despair followed her down the line of cells and out the door. She walked slowly but purposely to Oslo's chambers, her eyes showing no recognition to those who bowed to her as she passed. Pressing her hand to the door, she pushed it open and entered. I'm going to skip this next scene, um, only because it's Oslo trying to torture Stikes through Anima's eyes. It's, um... Mm. It's not bad bad, but it's not good bad either. You see, Stikes, Anima is under my control now. If you don't believe you can, if you believe you can rescue her, then by all means try. But let Sarian's fate be a warning to you. Oslo smiled warmly, bringing his lips to Anima's neck. He whispered, she's mine to do as I wish.
Tears fell from Stax's eyes. The memories tore his heart in two. Anima at Oslo's bidding was the worst he could have possibly imagined. He fell to his knees, unable to walk further towards Kulatish. Images hounded his mind and heart. Styx. Hawkeye and Rue knelt down. Noticing his, dis his despair, they gently lift him onto Miyako's back. Hawkeye rested his hand on Styx's back and whispered softly enough that it was almost as if he had just mouthed the words. If it were Gabriel in Anima's position, I would sell my very soul to get her back. I would also not hold anything that was happening to her against her. You need to remain strong for her sake. Stikes turned to look at Hawkeye. He's using her to anger me. I don't know what, is, what he truly wants by enslaving her, but because I can see her memories, he's using that as a form of torture against me. Stikes clutched his hair. I can't handle watching him take advantage of her. Think of it this way, Hawkeye replied merciless, now that his prince was acting like a child. If you leave her there, what do you think Oslo would do to her if he found out you aren't coming? Stax's ears twitched at this. Can you really live with yourself knowing that he will do worse things than that, than what he's doing now? Stax wiped away the tears forcefully his eyes sharpening once more, giving him his usual fearless self. I'm... Save it, Hawkeye snapped, loud enough for everyone to hear. Forgiveness comes after you rescue Anima, and break through this ordeal. Master Oslo? Anima crawled across the bed to watch him from the edge. Is something to your disliking? His eyes ran over her body. Did I do something wrong? Oslo smiled and pulled her close to him once more. You've done nothing wrong, my sweet. I'm just unsatisfied. I want to see his face when I touch you. I want to see the agony I'm putting him through. What can I do to make you feel better, Master? Anima asked, tilting her head slightly. Oslo laughed and stroked her hair. He enjoyed giving her a more autonomous attitude. It had so far proved to be to his benefit and dispelled the rumours that he was using compulsion on her. Satisfy me more, he said, leaning back. I'm pleased if you pleasure me enough to forget what I want. A knock on the door disrupted his train of thought. Come in. A nervous maid stepped into the room. Glancing at Anima, she blushed. Forgive me, my lord. I didn't know you were busy. Without an order from Oslo, she sat up and looked at the maid in disgust. The maid quivered and knelt to one knee. Forgive me, your highness. I should have interested you first. Remember that in the future. Anima snapped, getting up to pull on a white bathrobe and settle into a chair. What brings you here to rudely interrupt us? The maid bowed and trembled. Our spies have sent word that Stikes has reached Alashire in Rias. At the speed they are travelling, they will reach Fragilis City in five days. Oslo glanced at Anima. Her eyes were wide with shock. Oslo turned back to the maid. You're dismissed. Bowing, she hurriedly left the room. Oslo stepped over to Anima, picking up a red vial from the dressing table as he passed. Anima, it's time for your medication. Yes, master. Anima carefully took the potion and drank it completely. What is your command? 
Oslo's eyebrow twitched. Too much autonomy caused her to override his power. Be a slave for my pleasure, Oslo replied cautiously. He could never tell what type of personality a command could invoke. Anima stood and bowed. As you wish, Master Oslo. Her voice wrapped around him like a warm blanket. I am yours to command. She walked towards him and ran a finger over his cheek. What would you like me to do, Master Oslo? Oslo merely pointed to a pile of clothes in the corner. Get dressed. And that's it for this chapter. Um. I. Mm, the story is old. So a lot of the writing is old. <laughs> Very old. <laughs> um, and I'm. As I'm reading, I'm like, I'm changing and ad libbing things, and yeah. Like, I'm not typing them in, but I'm like altering what I'm saying. Because I don't know if anyone else who's listening to this writes. But when you, the way you write, and then when you read it out loud to yourself, sometimes they sound like two different things. Um, yeah. Anyway. I will see you in the next one. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know which stories to continue on. Um, but yeah. Let your imagination run wild. Bye for now.